It's kind of hard to find when you're not. And I say that to you as a challenge. Get busy for Jesus. You know, God blesses this church and with good people, kind people, loving people, working people. And I appreciate you. And you know, uh, yesterday was a great day uh, for the church. Uh, yesterday we went, had the postal food drive. And I'm supposing there's 3,000 to 3,500 pounds of food sitting out here on the uh, truck right now that was, we got yesterday. And you know, I look at what uh, we're doing trying to help people. And I, I can see that God, what when we empty, God refills. He always does. And you know, uh, last Tuesday night when we had our Bible study up at uh, Smarter Springs Apartments, and we were so blessed, I just could not believe it. First one we were having up there, and 11 people came to the Bible study. 11. And it was just so wonderful. And you know, I went back and got the names, uh, and of those 11, only five came to get food when we had our food giveaway up there the first Saturday. And so God is working, not only through the food, but he's working through our efforts to teach the Word of God. We've got to keep it up, folks, because time is running out. And, uh, you know, think about Indonesia this morning. Think about that family. A family that was lost. A family that spiritually dead packed themselves with bombs and walked into a Christian church and detonated. Blowed up the whole family, but it destroyed. I think it was 30 Christians killed them. This morning, we don't never know when our time's going to be over. We're never gonna, we don't know when someone's going to walk in here and do the same thing. But I'd, I'd like to say one thing, though, whenever, if anything like that happens, or when death comes to me, that my father can look at me when I get there and say, you know, I was done with you. You'd, you'd accomplish what I had left you there to do, and I brought you home. That's what I want to hear. And I hope and pray that's what you want to hear. That you, God, when you met, face your Father, the Heavenly Father, He'll say, I'm, I was done with you. You kept the faith. You, you fought the fight. You stayed on course. And I brought you home. And so we do have some things that's taking place this morning. And I, when we have someone come in going to the mission field, I always tell them they can have just a few minutes. And uh, this being Mother's Day, uh, Mother Ethan, and I want to give you about five minutes to tell us what you're doing, and then we will uh, we will go on with uh, other things that we've got planned. This is Ethan Moore, and uh, it's Vestal Moore's great great grandson, and uh, he is uh, going to Utah there to uh, minister. And by the way, his dad went with him to Utah. That's pastor of Cherry Grove Baptist Church. Got under conviction. He's give up his church and he's going with him to Utah. Isn't that something? Ethan, you come on share just a moment about what's going on. Amen. I'd like to say thank you, Pastor, for giving me this uh, short time just to present the ministry, what the Lord's doing in my heart. Um, as he said, my name is Ethan Moore, and I'm a church planning missionary headed to the state of Utah. And I sent out of Cherry Grove Baptist Church there in Moravian Falls. And my dad has been my pastor um, all of my life, really, I guess. Well, he wasn't from when I was born till three years old, but I don't count that time because I don't remember it. But from three years, old, three years old until now, my dad has been my pastor there at Cherry Grove. And uh, that's where I've gone. Um, but I always knew that the Lord wanted me to be a missionary. I knew it for sure when I was 13. And from then on, I knew for sure the Lord wanted me to be a missionary. I didn't know where he wanted me to be a missionary to or what he wanted, where where he wanted me to go, um, but I knew he wanted me to be a missionary, and I just kept praying and asking the Lord to give me wisdom and where to go, and he kept closing doors. Um, I 
initially thought maybe about Africa or Alaska. Those were my first two thoughts of where I'd love to go. And the Lord kept closing those doors. And uh, then he opened the door for me to go to Central America. And I went down there with the prayer and the desire to go down there as a missionary. And the Lord closed that door. I come back from that missions trip and I go out to Utah to work for a week. When I get out to Utah, I get out there and get to looking at what all we're going to be working on, helping a missionary. Um, they renovate a church. There were six guys from Cherry Grove that were going, me included, to do some work. And when we got there looking at what all was needing to be done and what all we had to do, the Lord started doing a work in my heart. And I started to see all the people there and just the need for the gospel. And the missionaries started talking to us. And just Monday, I knew the Lord was speaking to my heart and said, will you come here? And so I started praying really hard. And by the end of that week, I knew that's where the Lord wanted me. And just I just got such a burden to reach Utah with the gospel and really the West in general with the gospel. Because here we have such an abundance of of the Word of God and Bible-believing churches and churches that preach the gospel. Here in North Carolina, where I've lived all of my life, we have over 500 independent Baptist churches. That's not counting Southern Baptist, Missionary Baptist, um, and all the other Baptists, um, because there's a bunch of different Baptists. But I looked up just the independent ones, just because that was what I was looking up at the time. And I've got the statistics for all the Baptists, but I, I remember the independent one more. It just sticks out because there were so many. There's over 500 independent Baptist churches in North Carolina. But in Utah, there are less than 30 Baptist churches. That's all the Baptists put together. And really doing some studying and looking, there are probably less than 15 that are actually preaching the gospel. And so you put that into comparison here in North Carolina. We've got 500 independent Baptists plus all the other Baptist churches right here where we live. But there in Utah, they have maybe 15 churches. I'll be going to an area, the Cache Valley. And they have two independent Baptist churches in the valley, population of over 120,000 people. It's home to Utah State University, so it's a college town. And um, the missionary that's there that I'll be working with when I first get there, getting adjusted to the mission, mission field, because it is different. You say, well, it's America. Yeah, but it's different out west. And I'll be getting adjusted to western missions, and I'll be there with that missionary. But he's got a ministry already started on the campus at Utah State University. So I'm going to be helping him in that and being able to reach my peers and reach my generation with the gospel and that's my desire and my main goal is to go and to reach souls and to disciple them and to train them up and to plant churches and to teach them to do the same thing because I believe if I can go and win a few and be faithful and reach them with the gospel and with the word of God and teach them then they in return can reach someone else and it can just start multiplying and through that I can reach the whole state of Utah that's my ultimate goal is to reach the whole state I can't do it on my own but I can do it by reaching a few here and a few there but there's a great need in the West and the verses that the Lord gave me when I knew that he was calling me. I was in my portion of Bible reading in Matthew. There at the end of it. But Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, when the Bible says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And that's what we need to do. We need to go, first and foremost, teach them the gospel and what believer's baptism is. And then as he continues to tell us in those verses, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And then continue to teach them the word of God and to disciple them. And we can do all of this because of the promise that he gave us that, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So I ask you to pray for me as I'm on deputation, as I'm trying to get there. Pray that the Lord would send in all the funds and that all that would come together. I need his people pray. And I know that the Lord will take care of everything else. And once again, thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to have this time. And thank you, church, for listening. You don't think that that is uh, <clears throat> needed. This, I was listening this morning uh, talking about the millennials and how that the uh, culture is changing so here that the millennials... Uh, don't uh, they they say that the conservatives is going to have to change uh, because the millennials today his age more and more of them are accepting homosexuality same-sex marriage abortion they're accepting all of that as a way of life and if if we don't rear up some people like these uh, young people here to fight this then uh, then we will we be buried um, by the culture that goes against God. And 
Also, we have, I think, two ladies that's looking to go to Africa, if I'm not mistaken. And so uh, you keep praying for them. But, but Michaela, I believe you wanted to say something, so you come on right now, okay? Hi, everybody. All right, so today is Mother's Day. And I normally get up and I speak. And, you know, I normally get up and talk about, you know, of course, Mama. And that was my original plan. I was going to get up here and talk about how great Mama was. I'm still going to do that, but um, something hit me. And so I'm not only wanting to talk about Mama and how great she is in my life, but I'm wanting to incorporate kind of, of another aspect on Mother's Day. So, um, Mother's Day, it can be filled with smiles, cards, and love, but it can also be complicated for some because we've got some with tough relationships with their mom and sticky situations, and then we've also got people who's lost their mom and, you know, are not able to wish them a happy Mother's Day. And then we've got women who want to be moms, but they were never able to have that ability, even though they are wonderful at parenting other kids while being a mom. Or, yeah, okay. And the bottom line of Mother's Day is the opportunity to thank God for the women in our lives who have helped shape our faith. And so that's what I'm going to do today. So the first woman I want to thank is very special in my life, and many of you know her, Annette. Um, she is definitely like my second mom. So she's there where, wherever I need her. She's always there, and she's always listening to me talk. Me, her, and Mama, we walk. And it is, it's mainly me talking. And she hears all my drama, work drama, boy drama, she hears it all. And the only time I'm not talking is whenever they're talking about, you know, their, their guns. And I'm still learning about that. So I, um, I unfortunately, I keep my mouth shut during that because I know I'm going to say something stupid if I open it. So, um... Yes, she has always treated me like a daughter from the get-go. And um, the second person that I want to talk about is Grandma. And whenever I was little and we first moved down, it was like Grandma was the house to go to. It was, it was the party house, okay? Like she always had food. She al we always did fun things. And I really don't get to go down there a lot anymore as much as I like to because you know I'm working and just stuff going on but she definitely she definitely knows about God and she's definitely a godly woman because as you all know we have a Bible study most nights at our house and it's it's good to listen and observe grandma and learn from her about how much she actually knows about the Bible and then the third is not one person. It's a group of ladies, and it's all the ladies of the church. Um, you have all made me feel loved, even if I've known you since I first started coming, or if I've, you know, you've just started coming, and I've got to know you. Um, you've always made me feel loved, and every time I walk through these doors, even if I feel like I'm the worst person in this world, um, you're, you are all coming up to me, hugging me, telling me how much you love me and how proud you are of me. And that really, that really makes me feel better. And so now the fourth person is, of course, Mama. Um, honestly, I don't understand how she puts up with me. I'm a very difficult child at times. And... <laughs> And you can ask her. I take all her clothes. Her closet is like Walmart to me. Um, her jewelry. She got mad at me last night because I was wearing one of her rings. 
Um, I have had my moments where I've made her disappointed and upset with me, but she has the unconditional love of a mom, and I don't think I could get through life without that from her. And um, she is definitely my best friend. So I am able to tell her most everything that's going on in my life. Like Annette, she hears all the drama, all the work drama, boy drama. She hears it all. Um, I'd definitely be lost without her today. There is no doubt in my mind that I could go through life without her in it guiding me. And I know that she'll support me if it's not too ridiculous. So, but um, for years I've always heard that me and Mama look alike. Like, we've always heard, you know, are y'all twins? And I'm like, no, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> and so, um, but I guess that makes sense now. So, she's the one who has taught me to smile whenever things are bad. And she's always there. And she always sees people for who they are. So, she's always pointing out things about people. And, um, and I'm so thankful for that. And she's definitely a big part of our house. So, if Daddy's not there, Mama's the one to go to. Even if Daddy's there, Mama's the one to go to. <laughs> and so, <laughs> she definitely has grace. And she does everything to the best of her ability with anything she does. And I'm just thankful that I have a godly example to live with, to look up to. And I'm very special that I get to call him mom. So, but um, in Proverbs 31, 10 through 31, it talks about the virtuous wife. I can turn to it. There we go. All right. And um, it describes what a godly woman, what you want to look for in a godly woman. And I'm actually doing my Bible study tonight about this passage. So I've done a lot of research about this. And um, I've definitely seen many qualities that's in this passage and many of you in here today and, and the bottom line is, I'm just thankful to have all of you in my life to help me and to guide me. And my prayer is that I get to learn from you more and more each day I'm around you. And to look upon your example and, and to be a better woman. So, um, y'all have loved me and prayed for me and supported me. And the Lord knows how lucky I am to have all of you in my life. Because, like I said about Mama, it wasn't just for Mama. It's for all of you. I don't think I could go through life without all of you in it. Um, I was going to read this, but I don't want to take up too much time. So, if you want to read it, you can. It's Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. So... I just wanted to thank all of y'all and wish y'all happy Mother's Day. Well, I tell you right now, she's uh, getting to be a, a good spokesman, isn't she? And I, I'm proud of you too, Gerald. I really am. And I, I tried to tell her that on different occasions of uh, how proud I am. Am of these all of these kids here to church, and I, I wish all of our kids that were here today that wish their moms were were here. It's where their moms uh, need to be here with them, but they don't have that luxury. And uh, and you know I never had it when I was going to church when I was a kid. I never had the luxury of having a mom there. And uh, but God still loves, and God still wants to take care of them. And I want to just. Uh, uh, ask uh, service can go any way we want it to because I believe that, uh, that as long as we try to follow the Lord it'll be alright does anybody else uh, this morning want to that you've got a good godly mother and you want to thank the Lord for her because you know what 
That's something precious to have today is a godly mother. One that will stand with you, teach you the truth, help you along life's way, give you the spiritual advice that you need, and be there for you when you make mistakes, willing to forgive you, willing, willing to do everything they can to help get, get you back on track. Good mothers, godly mothers. You know, there's a lot of good mothers out here today that just give their kids anything and everything they want. They never say no to them. And these kids think, boy, that's a great mom. And you know what? In the world, in the worldly sense, it is a great mom, but not in a spiritual sense. A spiritual sense is, is when a mom understands what she's got. She understands what the Lord has given her. And she takes it serious. And she understands that that child that has come forth from her womb will one day have to make decisions for themselves. And will one day pass away from the scene of this earth just like everybody else. And what have you done as a mother to help them to prepare in the decisions that they will make and when the time comes that they fade away also, when they leave this world to go out into eternity. It's a good mom that understands those things. It's a good mom that will set their children down and, and talk to them about it. And today, we feel like that we can't talk to our children about those things, but we should. We should everyone. And, and, you know, uh, just because I didn't have it at home, I feel like I missed something. I feel like that there was many years of my life wasted because I didn't have that. What if I had have had that, that guidance and someone to talk to me about Jesus? And, and uh, you know, all I ever heard when I was growing up, you won't live to be 18, boy. I heard that over and over. That boy never lived to be 18 years old. Now, I don't think that's exactly what you ought to be telling your kids. I don't think that's uh, actually helping your kids when you tell them that. Because you're telling them that you disapprove of their life. You're telling them that they're crazy. You're telling them that they don't know how to make decisions. And you know what I think? I wish... Mama could see me now. I wish Mama could see me now. Hmm. Anybody else got anything? Yes. 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 You know, I, I think back whenever I was a little boy going to church and I was a teenager, Mother's Day was really a special day in church. I can just see them women now, them mothers, a lot of them wore hats. And you know, the church would always be full on Mother's Day because the kids came to be with Mama. Don't see much of that no more. I think kids have forgot Mama because they're too busy with their own schedule. They're too busy enjoying the things of this world to stop and think about 
mouth. Mildred, I look at your family. I know you're proud of them. And they're proud of you. Anybody else got anything? I'm going to get tore up here in a minute. You know, a verse of Scripture in, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse uh, 5, Paul uh, talking uh, to Timothy, he said, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, I am persuaded in thee also. You see, our life is like a chain, isn't it? We're just passing it on. 
in that scripture speaks about Timothy's grandmother and how she taught Timothy's mother to have faith in the Lord and then Timothy's mother taught it to him an uncompromising faith one that wouldn't break down and I say to you church today and I say this to you mothers that have children you keep that unhinged faith don't you let that faith break down don't you let that faith compromise because those children that you're influencing those children that may not even be your own but the, your mothers to them in the different ways your mothers to them at church your mothers to them in life don't let don't let your faith break down but let your faith stay strong because somebody's reading you somebody's watching every move that you make when i think of all the mothers that have failed their children. And I think of all the dads that have failed their children. And then they've passed that failure on to those children. I was going to talk to you about in 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 52. In the King Azariah. And it said that uh, as he was king of Israel. That he was uh, influenced by his dad and by his mom. And he did wickedly. And then you find in Second Chronicles chapter 22 verse 3. That said his mother was his counselor. And he done wrong. He did wicked in the sight of the Lord. Mothers, you're an example. You're counselors. To these kids that God let you borrow. You're a precious vessel this morning. And God give you a special privilege. He give you a special privilege of being the guardians of life. The guardian of life. You see life was deposited in your womb. It wasn't yours. I try to tell everybody that life belongs to God. No matter who we are. And God allowed that life to be deposited in your womb. And he put you as guardians over that child. To take care of it. To take personal care of that child while you're carrying it in your womb. To be the personal protector, the personal provider for that child. My friend this morning, how any mother, how any mother, I don't care who they are, how any mother could destroy a baby in her womb is beyond my measure. I cannot understand it. And that mother that does that. Does not understand. That that life doesn't belong to her. You're only. God is only letting you borrow it. And he wants you to take care of it. You say well. There might be some reasons. No, there's not a reason. There's not a reason. We all know that's the truth. Please take it serious, mothers, about the personal care of these babies while in they're in your womb. But, but take personal care of them outside the womb. You teach them. The Bible said, Proverbs 22, 6, teach a child in the way it should go and when it gets old, it will not depart from it. But if we're not teaching those, if we're not teaching the elements of God to these children, who is teaching them? The world is teaching them. 
So who they're learning from? They're learning from the world. They're not learning from moms and dad. You know, I I think a, a couple examples, and I'm just going to give these to you, and we'll here I go again. What looking at that watch? Somebody needs to take that off of me. <laughs> <laughs> because we're we're here to honor the Lord, but I think of of some of the people and that uh, looked at their baby, mothers that looked at their baby, and they they saw something. When Sarah had Isaac, you know what she said in Matthew twenty one six. She said he's a, he's a son of joy, of laughter. But he said, those that will listen to him will laugh also. Those that will listen to him will laugh, laugh also. Those that will hear. And you see, there's a spiritual implication as to what that's talking about. Why? Because it's through Isaac's generation that Sarah's son, that Jesus came through and died on the cross that we might be saved. That mother knew what she was talking about when she said he's a child of joy, a child of laughter. And those that will listen will laugh also with joy in their heart. When John Jacobin put little, when she had little Moses, and she looked at him, and she said, he's a goodly child. We don't pay attention to what that word goodly means. God showed her something about little Moses. And that word goodly means that he would become powerful. That he would become famous. That he would be a gallant man. A mighty man. A glorious man. Talking about her little son, Moses. God, she looked at him and she said, he's a goodly child. And she did everything she could to protect him. That's the way we ought to do it every, every time a father and mother has a child born to them. They ought to look at that child and see that child through the eyes of our Heavenly Father. And if we'll see our child but through the eyes of the Heavenly Father, we'll see that God will reveal to us some mighty things about our children. But you know what? We've caught up with this idea today with our children. Oh, they're so pretty. We take those little adjectives that describe them. But how many times do you ever hear anyone having a child today? Look at that child and say, God's got a plan for you, honey. How many, how many moms and dads stands over that little cat bas bassinet when they bring that little baby home and lay it and pray over it and say, God's got a plan for you, baby. God wants to use you. And I'm going to be a good mommy. I'm going to tell you all about Jesus. And I'm going to pray for you. Mm. Being a mother's precious. Anybody else?
you mentioned uh, Melanie and Wayne, and you, uh, of course, some of you don't know that, that uh, they've got little Heather, and uh, little Heather can't do anything for herself, nothing. And uh, But you know what? You never hear Melanie and Wayne complain. They know that when they go home, they got to go home and take care of Heather. They know that during the night, they might have to take, get up to take care of Heather. But you know, here at the church, they're always happy. They always got a smile on their face, and, and, uh, and they're just, just uh, happy, happy people. And some people think that if they destroy a child like that, that they, if they do that, that will help them to have happiness. But that's not true. A little lady that I used to pick up her son, he couldn't do nothing for himself. He was in a wheelchair. And I picked him up every, every morning, five days a week, on a bus. And I'd take him to the daycare center. And one day I was letting him off. And she said, you know... That boy brought a lot of joy in my life. And she looked at me and she said, You know, I've never had to worry one time about where he was at at night or what he was doing because he was always at home and right here me taking care of him. And she said, It's been a joy to take him. They're all dead now. But she said it was a joy. And I'm sure that Wayne and Melanie and Josh and Megan all Heather's a joy to them. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Appreciate that. Anybody else? Okay, come right on. <laughs> nervous, huh? Yeah, no, I'm not nervous. I'm a Purdue, just oh, like you. Right. How long do I got? <laughs> How long do I got? That's a lot. Here you go again, as long as you want to take it. <laughs> well, um, no, you just stand up here. Yeah. Um, I like to have eye contact, so whatever. 
I'm going to say I like to look at y'all. That's a, don't let me cry. No, I can't help that. <laughs> I'm a, one of my pet peeves is, no, I've already got one. I like eye contact. So, um, not as strong as Michaela when I stand up here because I am so blessed. If you know anything about me, hopefully it will be she knows she's blessed. Um, I don't show it all the time, and uh, but I very am very, very thankful for everything that I have um, that God's given me. Um, <clears throat> very proud, too, um, that I was raised in a Christian home uh, with mom and dad, and um, I'm very thankful for them, and um, they're not able to get out now because they're elderly. Um, I get together with them later, but I um, was hoping that they might be here today, but very thankful for the mother-in-law that God gave me. Uh, she's like Michaela said, she is very wise. She's like myself. She don't like to talk. She don't like attention drawn to herself, but I don't think she gives her enough credit where her credit's due. So we all love you. I'm very thankful. And I'm very thankful for my kids. Like Michaela said, we, all of us that have teenagers, yes, they are trying. Any kid is trying, but they are a gift from God. Yes, they are. And I'm very thankful for them. I'm thankful for the trials that God puts us through. And I'm very thankful for the joyous and happy times that God gives us. And I think that's what we all have to realize. We have to give praise to God through the trials and the good times. That's right. yes. And that's one thing that I have really learned in my Christian walk. Um, and to do what God tells you to do. If you know that you are led to do something, do it. Yes. Because um, we started out homeschooling uh, with Michaela. And um, along came Nathan, and Michaela went to school in uh, third grade. Nathan started kindergarten. Along came Aaron. And every year, I knew that's not what I'm supposed to do. They're not supposed to be there. And every year, God would tell me that. And I kept not listening. I didn't listen to God. Mm -hmm. I didn't do what I was supposed to do, even though Leanne knew what I was supposed to do. And sometimes it takes a child to get your attention. Yes, children can get our attention. Yes, it does. The children of this church can get our attention. Aaron wanted to be homeschooled when he was done with fifth grade. He kept on talking about homeschooling a lot, you know. <laughs> No, we can't do that. He kept on talking about homeschool. So, we're homeschooling now. And you know what? It is amazing of what a feeling it feels like when you're doing what God wants you to That's do. That's right. That's right. Did it cause obstacles? Yes. So, Aaron, I'm very thankful for you because you got me back on track. God worked through that somehow. And I'm very thankful. Yeah. Am I the best teacher? No, absolutely not. Don't know much about science. <laughs> but with a lot of prayer and a lot of dedication and perseverance, we can do what God calls us to do. So I'm very thankful for this church. Um, like it's been said, there's a lot of ladies that has a lot of influence in this church. And another thing that I am learning as I mature we're not getting older. We mature. As Amen, I mature, Amen. we are called to be mentors, men and women. And there is a lot of mentoring that we can do in this church and outside this church. And I'm very thankful for the Bible studies that we have at home for a godly husband that has taken the initiative and the dedication and the time to do that, that has taught us has taught me more than what I have learned in my whole lifetime being in church, what we do at home. And I'm very thankful for 
everyone that is available that's had the opportunity to come and us talk to and open the Bible up with and just show them God's word and what God says and how much God loves us and how much he wants us. So I guess that's all. But I am very thankful. And I love you all. Got one question. Oh. All right. About science. You do understand creation, don't you? Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I can do that. She's part family, you know. All right. Uh, if, if everybody else, a heart is free. I think they've got some roses. And uh, uh, we are, uh, the kids that uh, your parents are not here that's on the van, they're going to give me your roses. And we'll give them to you when you get off so you won't break them. Uh, and we're going to initiate the new van this morning. We're going to baptize it as I take my kids home today. And, and I just want to say thank you to the church for the for the new van that we have. And